Okay, let's get straight into episode five. Well, it's close enough to touch, but it's really a million miles away. It's actually only 240,000 miles away, Dawson. <laughs> I love how she corrected him there. She was like, actually. It's still romantic. Oh, we're finally getting where they're on the roof. Human beings are made up of 70% water, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the moon controls the tide. Mm -hmm. Ah. So the moon is going to bring forth personality traits. Things are going to go awry in this episode. Weird things always happen to Yeah, they do say that during the full moon. See? We almost fell off. Absolutely. Mitch, I don't mean to sound desperate, but... Okay, she is still here. Okay. I wasn't certain if she had actually left the last episode. Is it that bad being here? Let's just say Cape Side really is a bridge I should burn. I, yeah. But I thought I would acknowledge it and smooth things out a little. Mm. It helped. A little. She does feel so much more mature beyond her years. Which are? Real conversations that don't offend my mother's virtue with four little words and uh, mm -hmm. exotic cup of brown roast coffee. Coffee. Because obviously she can't drink, or she's not supposed to. If you have any compassion for the working man, say you'll show me the gentler side of Cape Side. Sure, Jan. No. Oh. 7.30. Yeah. It's always, yeah, have you noticed, it's always 7.30, 8 when they do these coffee meets in, in shows. It's also, it's extremely windy here, so I can hear my door banging, while also watching them act in extreme winds. Your Debbie does Dallas. It's uh, it's jacuzzi floozies actually. <laughs> they see no. You know McPhee. I really like these. Bite two. the bullet. Meaning, all this verbal sparring we're doing is getting a little dangerous. So we should just go out on a date before somebody gets hurt. Did you also see the price went two for three dollars? Remember back then when you get something like that? Maybe if I was asked politely. <laughs> okay. Okay. Andy. Okay. Would you like to go on a date with me tonight? That was polite. There we go. Don't sound too enthused. <laughs> I'll try to restrain myself. So where are we going? Uh, um, how about the movies? You know, that way we don't have to talk to each other too much. Less chance of punches being thrown. Not a bad idea, actually. Um, I'll meet you there. No, it's okay. It's a date. I can pick you up. Okay, well, um, how about we meet at the ice house? I mean, Why do you not want him to meet where you live? Uh, well... Not your house? shouldn't do this. Oh, yeah. Come on, Annie. Don't worry out on me now. Well, okay. Um, 7.30. See you there. Don't be late. What was that about? That was weird. Also, another 7.30. Everything's going on. Joey did say things happen with the, f the full moon. <laughs> Good, because I've been dying to tell somebody I've got a date with Vincent. <laughs> you bitch. Yeah, how did you think she was going to act, Jen? You go and steal him from me. I mean, he wasn't interested in you. He doesn't even know that you exist, Abby. But you knew she was gonna react like that because she reacted like that the last time. I mean, that guy probably has illegitimate kids scattered all up and down the eastern seaboard. Shut you up, didn't Abby. care about that. Yeah, he probably likes a kinky. Oh, but that's right. You're the girl from New York City, right? He probably knows an easy lay when he sees one. Smack her. Yeah. No, you did not, bitch. Man, huh. I won't be late, dear. Okay. Bye bye. I cannot believe that you would hit me. Huh? Me, your best what? friend. We're not best friends. In the past two days, you've called me a bitch, a slut, and a loser. Yeah, but I would never hit you. You're warped. You know what? Why don't you just go home? Oh. Damn, Abby. Let it go. The sky turns to crystal ball. Hello. Is that J Jack? Okay. They're both very arty. That is something they have in common, a connection. I mean, you find this new location simulating? Absolutely. It's a, it's a new environment I mean, for What him. other time in your life are you ever going to be exposed to so many different walks of life? Each with a different story, a different College, hope, university. We used to blame you for their food being cold, there are not enough clams in their chowder. Here you go. Just a touch of milk. I was curious why he was doing that. I guess he's just 
Ward. Let's see what he really wants. It's nice being off the boat for a night. You enjoy that? I mean, being out at sea for such long periods of time? Hmm, good question. Saving up for law school. Ah. My uncle owns the marina over in Bayboro. He hooked me up with a job. Also, it's interesting, he's lit dark and she's lit lighter. Inter interesting contrast. Okay, well, with the entrance here, and this area has excellent ventilation, I think that'd be a good... Oh, look how close they are. Get a statement from him in the middle of the and she's going to be closer to him now. So, Mitch, you really think that you are going to buy this condemned building to open up a restaurant? Oh, okay. It's clear what's going on here. You jump down my throat for having over a guest when it is obvious that your Thursday night escapades are overflowing into the weekend. All right, what's going on? What are Thursday nights? Mm, yeah, she doesn't usually talk to him like that. I knew Abby would be somewhere about. She's nosy yes. as they come. Hi, I'm here for Andy. We have a date tonight. Is that her mom? We're going to miss the movie now. She's going to annihilate me. I'm sure you could talk her out of it. She's very taken with you. Yes. She likes you. I'm sure he wants to give you the third degree. Probably. And Who Tim, are you? Maybe you're not the mom. You should meet Tim. Tim! Wait. Is Tim... Who's Tim? Andy and Jack's older brother. Who died. I have a feeling he died and it maybe did something to the mother mentally. Oh, it's Andy. I thought she was meeting him back at the... Is he here? Oh. Oh, Pacey. Yeah, I haven't seen him. Oh. Well, I was supposed to meet up with him tonight and so I went to the movie theater and I waited till after the show started. And he... Uh, I thought you met at the house. Oh my God. What? What's, What's the matter? matter? The house. He said he wanted to pick me up. What if he goes to the house? Good, it's about time Pacey shows some etiquette. <laughs> Doing it on my parents' bed. Mm. With an X. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Right on my dad's 300 thread count. Did not go over well. Mm. Completely spoiled the moment. <laughs> spoiled the moment. Oh my god. Well, you knew they were going to kiss eventually. Okay, Abby, one more time. You're in my room because... Why are you here, Abby? <laughs> but you can't tell anyone. You're jealous. Jen is You're on insecure. a date with this older guy. And quite frankly, I'm concerned. So you're spying on him? Yeah. Well, of course. It's the fake like, modesty and care that she puts in her voice. The inflections are very well done from the actress. I would never buy it. Well, you can make it sound clever so she'd believe you. Just um, uh, tell her that you and Joey have decided to have an open relationship and that you and I hooked up. Sure, Jan. Very legit. Bye. <laughs> bye bye, Abby. <laughs> On the kitchen counter, what if Grams? I knew Grams said she wouldn't be back, but imagine Grams does turn back up and was like, Jennifer. Mm. Yeah, now she's so. What happened when I just kept to the good stuff? Oh, you're creepy. Oh. Look, I'm 16, okay? Oh, now she reveals her. Law school application. You're what? I was gonna say, how did he not picture that? You have no right to be here, okay? You were not invited. My family is none of your business, and. He. Calm down, yeah, he didn't do what anything. What did she say to you? Okay, she just invited me into this Norman Rockwell painting, better known as your home, and politely invited me to dinner. She was polite, very. And Andy, Andy, what? What's the problem? Tim died, he's dead, okay? <sighs> I don't think it was that long ago either, by the looks of it, because they all look more or less the age there. Look what else you left. By moonlight many years ago, my true love did I know. Huh? Oh, the moon and everything. There we go. Something had to happen. They were highlighting it too much that there was something going on between them. Messy. To stay here and you've got to fix this. No, I have to get back to work if I'm going to continue to support your father and his pipe dreams. You have never supported me. I'm sorry, Todd. Mom's... God! Dad! Yeah, I... The... You can't just let it go, can you? 
Yeah, he's so petty. Trying to get you forgive her and you just won't let her off the hook. <laughs> but the thing is, was Dawson gonna react when he found that Jerry kissed Jack? He taught me how to shave, you know, he taught me uh, mm -hmm. how to drive a car. Does he feel inadequate because he couldn't do the same thing? You know, he never told me what to do if my wife cheated on me. Ah, uh, just gonna yell at her. I do not know what to do with you anymore, child. Please don't preach to me right now. Oh, there'll be no talk of God. I'll leave him out of it. This is between you and me. There we go, Grams. New York behavior. Not while you're under my care. You will not disrespect me. Wait a minute. That's no, not... you wait a minute, Jennifer. This behavior will not be tolerated. You will treat me with respect. It is her house. Not degrade yourself, not under my roof, and not in my lifetime. I mean, it, it is her house. No oh, respect for yourself. Oh, no, don't. She actually does. Oh. I got why Grams is angry. I got it. But I feel really bad for Jen in this moment. Because she has absolutely no one to turn to. In Cornell. It was homecoming almost exactly a year ago. It was that year ago, okay. So mom was driving. And Jack and I were fighting for Tim's attention. We were always fighting for his attention. The ideal son? No, um, she didn't see the truck. We've tried. She was in the hospital for a little while. Dad kind of bailed and um... Oh, so the dad's like that. No. <laughs> No, she does. She needs, a, she needs a hug. She needs comfort. She needs someone no. to rely on. But she doesn't have anyone. I mean, his Dawson. life is um, crumbling. <laughs> the mood. Really weird night too. You know, let's I... just forget about everything. Okay. The moon. I don't know. Look, look, look at the moon. Mm. Close your eyes. Oh, what? Envision your future? Now, what do you see? It's the man. I, I, the man in the moon, yes. The man, remember? Okay, so they were hidden there. I thought, I wasn't going to say it. I thought I was going to be wrong, but he was going to the man in the moon. Our guests have jumped ship. Well, yeah. I should think so. Not me too. Who's moving out? I'll go. Oh. And he's not going to let it go. He's going to grab onto what he thinks is love. So Jack's definitely going for Jerry. He wouldn't have kissed her otherwise. Oh. I mean... Damn. Mm. So many theories going through my head. Joey wasn't wrong about the moon and the effects that it has on people. This was the changing of the tides for a lot of people and what's going on. It felt like maybe the dynamics for Jen and her grandmother changed because we've never seen her grandmother talk to her like that. They've had their differences, but she, for Gramps to leave, got out of it and to be like, I am genuinely upset with you. And it is her house. She has a right to be upset. And I'm glad she came back when she did, because though he stopped when Jen said he uh, she was 16, he could have continued on because he was taking no for an answer. And I don't think they look much older than their ages, if I'm being honest. So I don't know how old he thought she was. Um, but yeah, bye bye to him. Vincent, was it? Yeah, bye bye. But Jen has no one. And that's a running theme that we get throughout both seasons so far and my heart like, hurts for her in that sense because she really is just looked at in a very bad way by people abby who's supposed to be her friend anytime something does, doesn't go abby's way she then says these really awful things to jen but then expects them to be friends afterwards but you got a bit of backstory from abby why she is the way she is like you get it more and more but 
if you were really a true friend, yes, be upset because you like the same guy. And I get that they are very young. They're 16. They're teenagers. But there is a way you can kind of communicate without it resulting to insults. And Abby doesn't expect to be hit or anything like that. So she expects people to just bow down to her having a go at them. And she's very dominant in that sense. So, yeah. And then her trying it on with Dawson. It was like, no, they don't like you, Abby. None of them... Like, want to be around you. But I do like her in the show. Because she creates that chaos that I do think is needed. And yes, it's stereotypical. But that's also what makes it so fun to watch her. Joey and Jack. I knew it was going to come. We got a sense of it in the last episode. And then it happened here. And obviously Jack took heed to what the man wrote. Um, didn't want to let go of what possibly could be love. Like, to take it by the reins. And they kissed under the pale moonlight. That moon, that moon, that moon, that moon. But Joey looked back, which means there was some feeling for her there. And I know she wanted to tell Dawson, but obviously everything he's going through in that moment, but she will eventually, or it will come out. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be good. And I don't see it working out for a period of time for Joey and Dawson. I don't know how long it won't work out, but we'll... We'll see when it gets there. I could be completely wrong and he might be angry but then forgive her. But I feel like she might date Jack for a, at least a few episodes. And Andy, yeah, Meredith does an amazing job of Andy. You know, her fast speech, her quirks, her neuroticism, then the realism of what she really does go through and apparently she's the only one who can handle it that she has a lot of stress on her the father's just i guess i don't want to say a deadbeat dad but there was obviously issues going on and he's maybe he's not taking responsibility or he doesn't want to believe his son's gone and he was the golden child and their lives have just been within a year been flipped upside down and i just loved watching pacey be so mature because they go back and forth which is how he was with Joey. Because obviously he's now got Andy. They've taken that side away. And we don't even see Pacey really interact. With, has Pacey interacted with Joey much? Or this season? We're five episodes in and I can't really remember at this point. But I love seeing it. There's a maturity to Pacey that has started to develop. And I think Andy brings out the best in him. And we're seeing the beginning of their relationship. And honestly they are my favourite pairing right now. And the, my favourite two characters I think this season they've just done such a good job with bringing them together and then at the end we're seeing everyone kind of go through things and decide maybe what's next step for them the, now Mitch and Gail were frustrated and I know people, some people might get angry well you were taking it out on the dad a lot no I get it she cheated I get it that's not to absolve her from what she did but if you keep throwing it in her face and any guy she speaks to, you're jealous of, especially when it's her job. And I know she had the affair with a work colleague, but if you can't let it go, as we now see at the end of this episode, then the best thing is for them to separate. Maybe a trial separation. I don't know if they will divorce, but if they have a trial separation, maybe they'll realise how much they actually miss one another. And it was a nice moment with the dad as well, with Mitch, when he was talking to Dawson. And saying he's, his dad taught him everything, but he didn't teach him this. And him crying at the dining table really lets you know how hurt he is. And like, he could use guidance right now. He could use his dad. I don't know if his dad's alive or any of their parents are alive. Because do we ever get mentions of his grandparents, Dawson? But I thought that was a good scene. And I it was nice to have adult moments, you know, away from the kids. Because like, obviously they're struggling through stuff. But they are really, the, apart from Graham, who's not really there, but the parents are the, the main adult focus in this show so far. All the other adults are really sporadic in their appearance this season so far. And I hope we get to see more of them as it goes along. And yeah, we'll see where everyone goes. I enjoyed the episode because this was heartbreaking, dramatic, frustrating, but really good especially with the idea of what the moon can do 
and them using it constantly and just also watching like, the little graphics that they put in and how they edited the moon into everything and how it was always in a mirror image. It was always a focus. So there was always something about to happen. But I wonder if at some point everyone will come together. I wonder if Jen will come back to the main group. Because it felt like she they were letting her move on from Dawson or at least you know, highlighting it because she didn't really mention him at all. So maybe they could do that. I don't know. It does feel like Annie's going to be part of the group now. Problem is, Jack likes Chewie. So there's going to be that friction. I don't know. I would like to see all the group come together at one point. Just at some point, having all of them together. That would be nice. Again, I I think this season is picking up. We're only five episodes in. And I think it's a quite a strong season so far. 